In today's video, I am going to be breaking down three dividend stocks. Basically, there was an article not very long ago that was released on CNBC of Jim Cramer's top nine dividend paying stock picks. Now, some of those picks I personally don't disagree, I don't agree with, but at the same time, I'm going to be picking three, my top three of his nine that he picked. Of course, Jim Cramer is one of my favorite TV personalities when it comes to stocks. So let's get down and let's check these out. Okay, so this was the article. You can find it on CNBC. And, of course, the picks that he had was Dow, IBM, ABV, B&G Foods, Chevron Verizon, American Electric Power, Dominion Energy, and Entergy. From there, I am picking Dow as one of the top as well as Chevron and Verizon. So Dow has been on his list for years. I remember way back when I first started learning about the stock market that he was always pushing Dow. And of course, it's a very good stock. <laughs> and it had a really good day the other day. But from there, what are we getting to see? Well, it is currently above the one-year estimated target of most analysts. Now, of course, analysts are kind of shying away from changing their views on stocks right now because of the coronavirus pandemic but what are we looking at we are looking at a stock that currently yields at 4.6 percent every single year that's fantastic from there the market cap is 45 billion which is pretty big when you really look at things like this from there what do we want to see well the x dividend date is february 25th it is currently at the time of making this video february 20th so if you want to get in on this stock to get that dividend of course you're gonna want to do it very soon from there its volume is pretty good you're looking at 4 million over the last day versus an average volume of around 4 million so at that it's going to be very easy to get in and out out of its 52 week trading range is very interesting to me because right now it's trading pretty well close to that 6131 well it's about a dollar off from its 52 week high so at that point you're not getting that much of a pullback from its top but that could mean that it could explode higher who's to really know until it happens to be honest with you you can never guess what happens to a stock before it happens you can never take a guess of what happened in the past to dictate the future but we can always make assumptions plus you're kind of safe with a nice dividend so its five-year chart is kind of interesting so this is a five-year chart but again it's uh not able to stretch back all that far but i remember that kramer was talking about this way back five or six years ago it's kind of interesting but anyways from there back in march it was it dipped really far down into that 30 dollar or under 30 dollar range and it's had a pretty well level increase over that time continuing to come back to these lines of support what that tells me and even way back here it was trending in that direction so to be honest with you i personally think that it may bounce off that point right there and potentially come back down just a bit before going back up so keep that in mind whenever you're looking at a chart before you're buying into the stock however if you are looking to get into the stock before the dividend it is definitely worthwhile so in the first quarter of 2020 it met expectations and then it beat three quarters in a row that is fantastic to tell you the truth especially during the coronavirus pandemic it's made Making money now 2019 was a down year it didn't make all that much money but we do see that it had some pretty good earnings and pretty good revenue in 2020 and I'm going to say that it's going to continue along with that track now I just did recently break down Chevron because of course Warren Buffett the Oracle of Omaha purchased a massive 4.1 billion dollars worth of their stock recently now from there it is currently trading at 5.4 percent and of course any stock that Warren Buffett owns and is currently buying into is worthwhile owning ourselves at least in my opinion I personally do not own Chevron stock directly but I may through ETFs volume is quite high you're looking at an average of 10 million shares traded per day so it's highly liquid you can get in and out quite easily it just recently had its dividend so yeah uh, if you're buying into it right now you're not going to see a dividend for some time 
And its chart is quite interesting. It hit what looks to be very similar to a double bottom. Of course, that happened there. So that's kind of technically hard to say. It's not necessarily a true double bottom, but I'm going to say, in my opinion, it is. From there, it has been trading within a range, and it, of course, had another double bottom once again. So from there, I personally believe that it's going to be going up much higher. And of course, it does have that 130-ish range high and an average average high of around 125 ish so from there it, it may be able to recover back to that 120 125 region as long as oil prices continue to go up which i think it will and the reason why i think oil prices are going to continue to go up is because there's going to be less oil mining in the united states there's going to be that whole uh, oil uh, pipeline that was just cancelled by biden what ticked off a lot of canadians so from there uh, I think that oil prices are going to continue to go up. I went deeper into this thought in my other video, why Warren Buffett invested in Chevron. So make sure to go check that out. As far as earnings goes, it's had some pretty good quarters. It's also had some pretty negative quarters. So it's been, the oil price has been negative. You're basically, when it comes to mining stocks or oil stocks in general, it's really going to trade along with the price of oil. So you have to really keep that in mind. Any mining stock, even when it comes to Bitcoin mining, it's going to start moving or back and forth, up and down, whatever you want to call it, with the price of the underlying asset that they are mining or that they are dealing with. From there, when it comes to revenue, it has been declining, but so has oil prices. It's had that negative year, but then again, oil prices were negative. So there is always that to keep in mind. Now, Verizon communications is an interesting topic so why i picked verizon is over the next five years i think they're going to be a fantastic company even over the next 10 years i think they're going to be pretty solid the only thing you really have to worry about with verizon is the fact of now there is spacex who is getting into the whole communications um area of the world and of course yes verizon is dealing with cell phones and SpaceX is really dealing with at-home networks. But what does this really tell us? So what this is telling me personally is when, as soon as SpaceX is finished with getting into people's houses, and they seem to be wanting to do this throughout the entire world, but right now it's really just focusing in on Canada, US, UK, and this kind of a northern, northern area of the hemisphere. But when it starts getting throughout the entire world, I would assume that their next step, and this may be 10 years from now, but SpaceX's next part or next step will be to start putting towers in local areas and then selling a cell phone network that connects to that tower which then connects to their satellites. This way you can then have a SpaceX cell phone with a SpaceX home network and who's to say that they may just say well just lump in it all at the same price and you're all set because that would be a fantastic <laughs> that would be a fantastic way of selling their internet and really destroying the underlying like the the past communications companies for example up here is Telus, Rogers, Bell, Kojiko they are going to go down to nothing if SpaceX does that strategy because SpaceX is going to eventually have 10, 20, whatever thousand satellites in the sky and it's going to absolutely eat up all of the in-home networks. Once they're gone, it's going to be the cell phone networks if they can get a couple of towers here and there. So when we look at the historic chart, we can see that it really never had a massive dip when it came to the coronavirus pandemic. It did hit that double bottom, which pretty much the whole market did. And that's why the whole market has accelerated back. Now it has taken a pullback, which is quite interesting because it has had four straight quarters of good numbers. And of course, it's had four pretty good quarter or four pretty good years of of revenue however when it comes to earnings their earnings are slightly growing but it's nothing like 2017. I hope that this video has helped you understand a couple of the different stocks on that list of Jim Cramer's. Anyways you can go check out that Jim Cramer uh, that article 
over on CNBC, and of course, never under or never trust a random person on YouTube. Always do your own research. I hope that you have enjoyed. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. These are my picks. I'll see you guys again next time, and I just may make a SpaceX uh, internet video of what they potentially may be doing in the future. At least what I think they'll be doing. I'll see you guys again next time.